Good evening. I'm Kate Perizzo from the Department of Geography here at the University of Guelph, and tonight I'd like to speak with you about my academic passion, which is garbage. In particular, I'd like to convince you in the next few minutes that food waste is one of the most pressing issues facing our food system today. It's been estimated that about 30% of all of the food that's produced in Canada goes to waste at a cost of about $31 billion. There are also environmental, economic, and social implications to this scale of waste. Environmentally, food waste represents a waste, a waste of all of the inputs that went into growing that food in the first place. We're wasting the land, the water, the fuel, the nutrients that went into that production cycle. It's also been estimated that about 5% of Ontario's greenhouse gas emissions come from food rotting in landfills. And that doesn't even include the 30% of wasted emissions associated with our agricultural system. Economically, food waste is expensive for a number of different people across our food system. Uh, it's been estimated that households waste about $30 a week on food that they don't end up eating. Municipalities who have green bin systems spend a lot more money to collect organic waste than they do to collect recyclables or garbage. And then others across the food value chain who end up throwing out food instead of selling it have to deal with those economic losses as well. So in a way, the level of food waste that we see is essentially an economic inefficiency in our system. And socially speaking, I think there are ethical concerns with a system that wastes so much at the same time that so many others go hungry. Food Secure Canada tells us that one out of every eight households in Canada is food insecure. And Food Banks Canada tells us that almost 900,000 people use a food bank in this country every month. And I think we can do better than this. But rather than exclusively focusing on the big picture of this issue, I'd like to give us a more intimate setting for considering the topic of food waste. So I'd like you to think about your own kitchens. Our research group, which includes Dr. Mike von Masso, who you'll be hearing from shortly, Dr. Ralph Martin, and an excellent team of students and staff, has been working with the City of Guelph and a number of other municipalities to understand what's happening in households with respect to food waste. You can see in the photo at the left of this slide what it looks like when we collect uh, and analyze and measure food waste. This is a photo from one of our waste audits. You can see here we've collected all three streams of waste. We sort through it to find the food. We then sort that food and measure it. We also then go out and conduct surveys and interviews to understand not just how much and what kind of food is being wasted, but why it's happening and what kinds of interventions will help people to reduce the amount of food waste that they produce. In theory, our kitchens are the places where we have the most control over our food and thus our waste. We have control over what we buy, what we cook, what we waste, but what we've learned from our Guelph study is that we are actually wasting enormous amounts of food. Uh, our study shows that it's about 4.5 kilograms or 10 pounds of food waste per household per waste. And shockingly, what we've learned is that about two-thirds of that waste is what we call avoidable food waste. What that means is that it was edible before somebody let it rot in the fridge or decided that they just didn't want to eat it anymore. They were sick of it and they were going to get rid of it. And you can see this from the photo that you see on the right side of the slide. You can see here a perfectly intact sweet potato, a head of lettuce, and a butternut squash. All of these foods look like they could still be eaten, even though we pulled them out of a green bag that had been sitting at the side of the road in a green bin, possibly outside in the sun for days. Still probably could have been eaten two months down the road if that sweet potato had been stored properly. We also learned in our study that about two-thirds of what people throw out is fruits and vegetables, and you can gather that from the photo at the right as well. So what this suggests to us is that people go to the grocery store, they buy healthy produce to feed themselves and their family, but they don't actually eat it. And so this is a public health and nutrition concern as well. So we know from our surveys and our interviews that there are some major barriers to overcome at the household level. Convenience lifestyles are a big driver of food waste, and we also know that a lack of food literacy is also a big problem. So in other words, if people knew how to plan meals better, how to shop more thoughtfully, how to better interpret things like best before dates, they'd probably be reducing the amount of food waste that they produce. So household food waste is a big part of the problem, but we also know that about 50% of that 30% of all food wasted occurs at other parts in the food value chain. And so our research team is conducting studies to understand what's happening in places like restaurants, processing facilities, 
retail, grocers, emergency food providers. And importantly, we're also bringing those actors together to understand what the barriers are that they face in reducing food waste, how they can potentially create partnerships with one another to reduce food waste. So for example, we've heard stories of grocers who give produce that they can no longer sell to livestock farmers so they can feed their pigs that produce instead of uh, fresh grain. And we're also asking them about the kinds of policies that would support their waste reduction efforts. And this is very timely because the province of Ontario is currently revisiting its waste management legislation. We're very hopeful that we can contribute to these conversations with data and research. Uh, it's important to note as well that there are a number of people who have been excellent collaborators from different sectors. A lot of other people are thinking about this. We think this is really the right time to be addressing food waste. We've had partnerships with municipalities, private sector actors, NGOs. We've had excellent support from Ontario's Ministry for Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs as well. So the first step in reducing waste is to acknowledge the scale of this wastage, to make visible and legible this issue as a phenomenon. Our cultural urge to push our waste out of sight and out of mind means that waste has been ignored as part of our food system for far too long. We talk about holistic farm to fork systems where we think about everything from the production of food on the field to how it ends up on our plate. But what happens after that point? What comes after the fork? There's much to be gained by investigating food waste. We can prevent resource loss in our agricultural systems. We can mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. We can create distribution systems that save money and allow us to recapture energy and nutrients. And hopefully these innovations will also help us to create a more equitable food system where all eaters can access high quality nutrition. If we want to learn how to feed 9 billion people, I suggest that we start by looking in our waste bins. Thank you.